Good morning, everyone here at the Investing Stuff You Should Know podcast. We have a fantastic guest with us today, Maurice uh, Philogene. Hopefully, I didn't mispronounce his last name. He is quite the accomplished uh, investor, uh, fund manager, entrepreneur, all kinds of fascinating, incredible things. I always felt I feel really lucky to have him participate and join us and share his deep, deep knowledge. And he's uh, making it work on his end. It looks like he's got a little, uh, you know, he's making it work with his family uh, and uh, hopefully we don't lose him. But Maurice, uh, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, brother. It's, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Fantastic. So uh, let us let us talk about, uh, basically you, you have this, I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile here, Maurice, um, investor, mm. entrepreneur, owner, coach, uh, philanthropist, all these different things here. Mm -hmm. Give us a, uh, give us a couple of bites of what Maurice uh, has done and what, what led has led, has led you to this point in your life. Yeah, man. Um, everybody's got a journey, right? Let me, I'll, I'll just start at the end where I am now. Sure. Besides sitting in my car at my kid's swim practice, which is kind of funny. Um, I am uh, 46 years old. I'm about to turn 47 next month, actually. Um, I'm out of the W-2. That happened last year. But for 25 years, I was doing three parallel careers. Um, IT consulting, so de developing IT systems for large government organizations, strategy, blah, blah, blah. That was 25 years at Accenture. I did 22 years in the military as finishing up as a lieutenant colonel and federal agent through my service with the Air Force. And then I became a street cop in 2008 in D.C. Um, I retired from that last year, too. And this was all did kind you, of going on at the same did you time. Need, did, did you need to do that, Maurice? Or did you feel, was it like a, did you felt kind of like a sense of duty there? Or did you no, want to help there? That's the right question, man. It, um, when I got back from being deployed after 9-11, going back to corporate wasn't, just wasn't cutting it. I, I just didn't. Um, it didn't resonate with me anymore. And uh, I'm an old football guy who tried out for the NFL a long time ago. And I just missed the huddle. I just missed, you know, looking back and forth at 11 people and you trying to meet the same goal. And that was yes. being a street, street cop. So I just wanted to do something meaningful in my community. So yeah, that's, how, that's how that all started. Um, yeah, yeah it, so was, many, it was a great thing. There's so many threads to, to pull on there. Uh, I'm just, yeah, yeah, there's just so many, so many awesome things. Um, and I left my W2 job, uh, beginning of this year, uh, mm. last year as well. Congrats. And, uh, so yeah, so, the, and, uh, so obviously you mentioned that you had done that. What, uh, you, I imagine you probably could have done that sooner than you did Maurice. And if that's assumption is yeah. correct, let me know. But, uh, why did you, uh, stay as long as you did I, all these multiple careers, like you said, like demanding full on, you know, full careers in themselves. And you were doing all these things concurrently. Uh, why all three? And then uh, why did you wait for as long as you did and think, hey, I'm going to now do this, take this next step in my life? Yeah, man, because I think freedom manifests itself in different ways. Yeah. My, my, my buzzword is freedom. And I've always wanted to try life on and do different things. Oh, I, I like don't that. Believe I like that. Try life on. <laughs> you got to you got to try life on, man. Now, I've been very, very intentional about that my whole life for some reason. But I so there's a real estate show. So I found real estate when I was 21. I found passive income around 22. And I started buying condos in the DC area from 02 to 2014. I got up to 35 single family homes, was very strategic about paying these condos off over time. It was so inefficient just using a paycheck to pay it all. Yes. Um, but I did pay it all. And by 2008, my basic needs were covered. I had about six grand of passive coming in. And once you start to realize, oh, man, you can cover your basic needs with passive income, of course you can leave work. But then you realize that life is, was never about money in the first place. I enjoyed my job. For, I, I worked at Accenture, which is a global consulting firm. I'm so grateful for my time there, the yeah. people that I interacted with, the clients that I had, the experiences, et cetera. But I never wanted to leave. And I also wanted to serve in the military and be overseas and be a federal, I was a federal agent and federal agent in charge and lead troops in what we did. And I wanted to be a street cop. These are things that you want to do, but sometimes we are jaded, if you will, by the pursuit of money. But as soon as you can get, this is how I look at it. As soon as you can get past your basic needs, yes. then you start to realize that there's a lot more to life. So I am plugging in. And it was just this last year where I realized, no, it's time to go because my life goals have started to shift where I need more time freedom to go after them. That's so good. 
uh, Maurice. That's so good. So um, yeah, so the that 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 life goal. What is? Why don't you share that with us now? So yes, all this yeah. this illustrative career, all these different tr tracks of full on, mm -hmm. like I said, professionalism and uh, you know high accomplishment. What the, what is that nugget that you this that you uncovered that says, hey, I need to actually go full time and this leave this other th these other things behind. I, I think that it's not that I necessarily uncovered it. It's always been there. So yeah. for me, constant learning and always having a beginner's mindset has has always stuck with me. Um, so single family through 2014 and 2015, I switched to multifamily. It wasn't the money. It was the challenge. I needed that, right? Uh, when you travel to a different country, you are in a different socioeconomic space. They speak different languages, have different societal problems than we do, et cetera. So I've traveled my entire life, 100 countries over 300 times kind of thing. Now I want to give back in meaningful ways to society in my own way. So I have this definition. How can I impact someone's decade in a day, right? I need capital to do that. So that logo in the background, Quattro Capital, I started yes. with four, four partners. 2008, 2019, we formed it. 2020, we did our first deal, apartment complex syndication. We've done 26 since. I take a good portion of that revenue and I go overseas, typically in the Mideast, sometimes do stuff locally in DC, but I'll do things like pay for people's surgeries. Um, pay for, uh, my oldest son is autistic. Yeah. Uh, but imagine having autism be part of your family in a country that has no resources for it, right? So like I'll you know, pay for a one-on-one -on -one tutor for two years for someone that happened a couple of times. I, I just have this drive to give back to people and I cannot do it as a police officer anymore. I'm not running into people's houses anymore. But yeah. what I can do is use this knowledge that I've built up over time and my lack of fear to do new things and go out and impact the world as much as I can. But man, I needed more time to do it my way. So that's why it was time to leave all the employers all at once, actually, within a two-year span. Well, that was a very, yeah, very, kind of came to a very interesting resolution there. Um, how do you, um, let's just talk about that, that uh, you know, kind of the terrible side of the, of Quattro Capital there, yep. Maurice, mm -hmm. how do you, uh, how do you find these opportunities to help? And uh, how do you decide? Obviously, like the, as we all know, there's endless need, endless opportunities to, to help people. And like you said, you have, you know, maybe, you, maybe from your time that you spent overseas, but you said that some oftentimes in the Middle East, how do you, how do you, yeah. which to go with? How, how do you choose that? People people, 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 people. So there's two parts of the coin, uh, two sides of the coin. One, Quattro itself, we, we siphon off a certain percentage of our revenue and it goes to charitable causes. Um, right now we're focused, on, and it's all affordable housing. It has to be affordable housing related because that's Quattro, you know, that's what we do for business and we, we want to align it to the business. So okay, yeah, that, that's, that's key. That's key to, dis to have that distinction as well, to know that. Okay, yeah, yes. it doesn't really make sense. There's muscular dystrophy, there's Alzheimer's, there, there's so many different things. But part of our mission set is to affect affordable housing. When we buy apartment complexes and improve them, I want, yes, of course, we have to raise the rents. It's done over time, but it's done at a particular point where the housing is still affordable for the people who live there. But then they get, you know, better quality of living. I love that. So our charitable side is affordable housing related. We're, we're about to start working with at-risk veterans. That's, that's another cause of mine, obviously. Yeah. So that's organizational, but on a personal level, there's always people. So I have friends, for example, in Lebanon and uh, one person in particular, her cousin is a priest. He's obviously connected to a lot of families in need. So on Christmas last year, we just kind of went door to door to those families, surprised them. And we did things that were gonna change their decade. And you know, the hope that that gives to a family when there's a brother coming over from the East Coast of the States and showing up on your doorstep 8 p.m. on Christmas night. Yeah. That's the type of stuff you can't really, I can't even articulate how I felt. Like I'm getting more from it than I feel like I'm giving to people, but that's kind of the way I want to be. I selfishly want to impact someone's life that much. And I stay in touch with all of them because I want to know how they're doing. And it makes me feel good as a human, man. So I, I'm just trying to give back as much as possible. Yeah, man. I, I'm not even sure what to say to all that. It's uh, I'm not, not I'm not just impressed. Like, oh my god, you know. But it's like truly like the the, the scale for me to like just to gr think about and grow into that for others to like you know, hey, like hey, see what Maurice is doing. Like, what could you do if you really 
you know, yeah. really drilled into your own self, your own circle of influence and the people, the, the impact you could have, the things you could help with, mm -hmm. like, you know, get out of yourself. Don't, don't think so small. And you know, what, 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 what is the potential here? So that's very encouraging, very, you know, yeah, yeah very inspiring. So yeah. that's, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so let's talk about um, how, Chris, quick talk about your partners. Uh, how did you find like-minded people that wanted mm. to, you know, team up with you here? How did, how did that go? I, I'm looking for, yeah. always looking for, I spend a lot of time looking for partners, um, it, whether it's, you know, my fund that I'm working on now or, or multifamily deals. Uh, how did you, how have you gone about that? It's a good story, brother. You know, I did all that single family real estate on my own. I, and I did fairly well, like, I, you know, I, I reached certain pinnacles for myself, but it wasn't yeah. until I found my partners when everything changed. I was at a conference in 2018 and my now partner, Erin Hudson, was on stage talking about her charitable cause in Nicaragua building homes. She got up there and said, look, I'm a little bit nervous to get on this stage, but I can build homes for people for five, five grand per home. So I just stood up and donated. I was like, yeah, that's, I like that. Let's go build somebody a home. Yes. That yes. opened the floodgates there at that conference, and she raised fifty-five thousand dollars in ten minutes. Right? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> it was it was it was beautiful, brother. So we 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 remained friends, and then she called me, um, I don't know, like eight months later, and said, "Hey, you know, I got this real estate deal. Can you would you be interested in sponsoring?" So I sponsored it. Yes. Two of my other now partners were with her. We did that deal in January of 2020. It was a 36 unit complex for like 4 million in Tennessee, 3 million maybe in Tennessee. We, it was so complimentary. Like our skill sets were so complimentary to each other. We liked being around each other. So we decided to stick with each other and we've done 26 or 25 complexes since. That should, that should tell you a lot. That, that is an, an enormous amount of activity yeah, but it's yes. really not. <laughs> it's, it's actually not because it, it was... Um, it's just like synergistic. So I just, you know, you, my, my, what's it called? My filter, once I started to realize I could do more with people, my filter has opened up to partnering with people. And not only did I, did that happen for Quattro, I have, I'm very big on lifestyle design. I've always wanted to live in the Mediterranean uh, since uh, running a field office for the Federal Law Enforcement Agency in Turkey in 2015. My filter has always been open now to the possibility. And wouldn't you know, when you find people who are synergistic to your goals, yeah. the timeline to create those things shortens. I have a partner now in Cyprus. We build real estate. It took me about a year to find him, figure it out. And we're on our third project on the island of Cyprus now. Partners and people shorten the distance from a, a thought to realization. You know, So I just want to throw that out there that Take time to find the right partners because it will totally change your life. Not just money, but how you're going to impact and how you're going to exist on this blue marble while we're here. Yeah, man, that's that's so good. So that's um, that asking that. So you're you're really you're less than that. And why do, why do you think it took you a little bit to come to that realization? I had I, not, I had my realization about partners like two years mm. ago, and I was like running around trying to do all the thing with multifamily and talk to brokers and talk to the bank and this and that. And then, no, and then I, there's somebody locally is like, well, I guess I could partner with him. I had this like terrible attitude internally about it. Like, well, you know, like two months mm -hmm. later, I was like, thank God I found this other person. Uh, this is so much work and so bad, so much better to have somebody check your work, check your back, mm -hmm, take mm -hmm. half of the load off. Uh, what was your, you know, was that just kind of the realization for you? Um, I mean, cause I just, you're around like all these people uh, all the time, but then like, sound like you kind of realize the partnership opportunity a little bit later in the real estate journey. Yeah. Uh, I, that's the point. I wasn't around all these people all the time. Okay. You know what sorry. I mean? Yeah. Just, yeah. Yes. My, my partner back in the day was the Fairfax County, Virginia library. That was my partner. <laughs> okay. Right. Like when I started real estate in 0203, Google wasn't yes. even, I think Yahoo was around, but Google wasn't kicking around yet. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I just went to the library all the time and read books. And because I could figure it out on my own, I thought that that was reasonable. It wasn't until 2015 where, remember I said I was making enough money, right? Yes. You, when you make enough money, you start to realize that you need cha a challenge to grow. Because I was just yeah. pressing repeat on the same thing. So I went to a multifamily seminar. Then you surround yourself with incredible people who are trying to do different things, et cetera. Then it pushed me to do that one deal. We did it faster. I had another partner and did some mobile home communities with them. And you just start to see it. It clicked. I can do, I would rather own 
very small pieces of a lot of watermelons than 100% yeah. of a pe peanut. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just found the right people. But it, it takes realization. It takes a bit of a time to get there. But once you get there, you realize you'll never go back to doing things on your own. Beautiful. Not as a primary. Now let's pivot to uh, a little more of the other of the, of the uh, tactical side here. So yeah. when you set up, when you have set up the deals you've done, are you just going straight syndication? Are you doing a fund? And what does that look like as you as you as you split part of that that profit? Uh, like is it is like a collective amount you agreed on just to go to to charity or, or philanthropy, or do you guys individually contribute per whatever you you feel is, uh, is good? Right, right, right. Yeah. Corp corporately, uh, a certain percentage goes off the top. We don't even. Gotcha just right away um as far as deals go we are raising from individual investors so individual investors just come into the portal we we do 506 b sometimes we'll do a c but our mission is around inclusive investing for people who are trying to learn it right so i really yeah, like 506 b for that I'm, reason. I'm working on i'm working through that very idea right now and like i talk to people like you should do a five you should do a c you should do a b i told somebody yesterday i was like i'm, gonna, I'm going to be with a b and he's like no no no, like go you know the, don't do that you know go with the c so I'm, I'm literally working through that right now so yeah i'd love to hear your thoughts on that it's you know in, it's in, it's in well, brother where 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 i don't where you and i came from we didn't know about this stuff we we're just fortunate <laughs> that we figured out private placements it's like if somebody would have told me about passive income wealth generation tax reduction and stuff when i was 15 yes imagine where i would be so there, you know there's a 23 24 year old who's a sophisticated investor we let him he's sophisticated enough i just had to kind of vet but we let him come into the deal just at 25 yes. grand because he needs opportunity right yes. and then now he's going to grow and he's going to provide that opportunity to someone else so i like to do the 506 b's because i know where i came from i grew up in inner city boston and my family's a haitian immigrant family and stuff and I want to be inclusive to people. Yes. Um, so we raise some individual investors, but we also work with fund operators. So we do have funds that are part of deals from time to time. I prefer individual investors, but the larger I get, the more I realize that that's not going to be sustainable because I can't do a $50 million deal and have $100,000 <laughs> minimums yes. and think that it's going to be sustainable to, to, to service all of these investors the right way so you know i'm thinking through it now but in general we like to just work with as many people as possible yeah have you um is that, and this this uh this line between b, uh, b and c is fascinating to me there maurice uh, have you heard uh, some yeah, yeah. i know the people making some noise about trend like uh, basically um like i think, can't think of the word uh basically mutating or transferring the the, yes. c, the b to a c do you know have, do you have any insight <laughs> Any, 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 any cool stuff from lawyers or whatever on yourself that you could share with us or share with me? Yeah. So we have a really good syndication attorney. He's been keeping us up to date on that whole premise. Yes. I yes. still, is it, is it, firstly, is it real? Like people are actually doing or just, just talk. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's real. It's okay. real. But you know, the, it's okay. So I am not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV, so I don't even want to take my advice. Okay. But yes. this is what I understand. If I start something as a 506 B. Okay. Yeah. And let's say I got to raise 10 million and I get to 8 million and I want to cut it off and go to a 506 C. The last moment I get the 506 B, you have to get everything signed, syndication documents signed, money in. You can flip it to a C and go public with it. Yes. But you, no other Bs can then come in, no other sophisticated or non accredited can, can come in at that point, right? Yeah. Or the other thing you can do from a company perspective, let's say I do raise all the money, 506B. I've got it all. Well, I can still advertise. I can shut it down, switch it to a C and put it out there that I'm raising. You uh, can raise backup funds if you want, but sure. people will do that for the pu publicity of letting you know folks know that they do deals from time to time. It's a little bit squishy. Uh, my value is getting people into deals. So I, I, I rather stick with a 506 B. I just like it better. Yeah, man, for sure. And I, and I think maybe the, the distinction there is as long as the SEC, if, if the SEC was to take a look at the local state jurisdiction, was yeah. to take a look at that. And basically like, did you advertise to not accredited investors before you That's switched right. over to C? And like, you That's can right. clearly show that, no, there was no social media posts or, or, note, or notes or anything like that, or, you know, statements mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. this prior to 
the like you said the flip from b to c and mm -hmm. probably that's the you know just kind of like a if you want to take something away from this if i want to take something away from this that's like just remember that distinction like you don't be advertising to non-accredited if you then go b to c then you can actually advertise. Yeah. Make sure that line is clear then you can you know have those public statements or whatnot brother and i like sleeping well like i like sleep i need to know that i'm going to bed not having crossed the sec or any other regulation or anything like that right so I'm, yeah for you guys listening don't don't cross the sec it is stupid it doesn't make any sense you're not doing good by you and you're certainly not doing good by any investors that are tied to you at all yeah man so good um what uh in the uh, now we're gonna pivot a little bit to actually the sure. the passive so you have these passive investors and you like to be what has mm -hmm. been your secrets of success or your track record well not track record yeah secret success and um, i guess ability to raise among those passive investors and how do you how do you find these people how do you convince them to come in uh how does that how does that whole operation work i i you know what i think people remember how you make them feel not what you say yes i've always been on that when you, you, we've interacted on, or you see my LinkedIn stuff, we've, yes, we've interacted on LinkedIn. I rarely talk about Quattro. I, I, I talk more about lifestyle design, exiting the W-2, the fact that there are many types of freedoms that we can attain, whether it's executing on your purpose or geographic freedom to experience the world, et cetera. People want to hear those things. And then they start to realize at some point that, oh, real estate is a tool, one of many tools in the tool belt to get them. Oh, great. There's this Quattro Capital thing. Let me inquire about that. I've, I've been very, um, just personal style, hands off on connecting with people in a meaningful way. And then if they find Quattro Capital, great. I love it. I'm very happy. And yes. it's been very organic that way. And I am not in business to try to have this inorganic behemoth of a company with my name on the side. I could care less about that type of stuff. Yes. What I care more about is, how do I get the affordable housing to residents? Cool. How do I get investors like really good growth in their money so they can do amazing things with their family and live their life the way that they want? Cool. I want to do that. So the way that I talk to investors or interact with, dude, what's going on in life? What's happening? What type of freedom are you trying to get to? Um, trying to exit the W, trying to leave legacy for your family. This deal's great. This deal's not great. Da, 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 da. It's about them. It is not about the operator. It is not about your company. It is not about your company's goals. Is it about, it is about people. And I think when people see that genuine nature of where we typically come from, yes. they come with us and they stick with us. No, that's, that's really good, man. That's uh, really powerful. Um, yeah. What did, have you seen some, I guess, some things to not do? You've maybe you've seen some look, surveying the landscape around you or just looking at what are some things that uh, either really like annoy you to not that you don't think should be done or maybe people you've seen people try to get into the real estate space or the capital raising space and they've failed mm -hmm. or they've had not not had success so give us a couple i know this is obviously we're all talking about positive stuff here what are some yeah. negative things you've seen like hey i like don't don't do that don't do that or like i've seen that people with these traits like not do well either one yeah, a couple of things one people who chase money you might make it at some point but you're gonna lose at another point if you chase money, it tends to run. And by that, I mean, if you're chasing down every deal because you're competing with other peers in the industry, so you want to have, you see your boy with a thousand units under management. So you want to have 15 units on 1500 units under management. So you're all over the place acquiring everything you can do. Yes. That's going to get people into trouble, brother. And, you know, part of the, part of the reason why I, I loved working in corporate, but I just posted like two days ago, I didn't like the posturing in corporate. I, didn't, I have to get this title. I got to go to this networking event to schmooze this guy, schmooze that guy. I never did any of that bullshit, to be honest. <laughs> I wasn't interested. I, I turned down titles. I, I wasn't interested in partner. What I was interested in is impacting my clients in a meaningful way and doing good by my boss. That's all I cared about. Well, the same thing happens in entrepreneurialism and real estate as well. People are competing with each other and jockeying and doing all that stuff. Stay away from that nonsense. Do the real estate for the impact that it can provide. It can help people achieve their goals by investing money. It can help residents have affordable housing. So that, that is really important to me. Um, I think that's it. I mean, that's just kind of, I'm not interested in jockeying with people at all. I'm interested yeah. in with impacting people as much as I can.
I love that, man. What is that? But then there's a temptation because I was, I spent some time in corporate too. There's a temptation like, well, I need to like get, you know, maybe get this title or grow or do this for that, you know, to, right, right, right. you know, to achieve like, 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 yes, it's like, you know, it's kind of like partially selfishly motivated. Like, well, I don't, man, I don't kind of care about it. Not really. But then, like, mm-hmm. then I was like, then I'm going to justify it to myself or it could be actually real that to get to this next level, I need to have more impact to then, then I, then that, that makes basically, uh, compromise what I might just organically do and say, Hey, I need to do, do this smoozing event or posture to get to this next level because I, I want to help more people. Uh, how, how did you work through that? Because like, yeah, pe- like maybe the real ambitious, you know, loud folks, uh, maybe they're getting, they're moving up and they're, they're having more impact than you because they're in a higher position. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm with you. I totally understand where you're coming from. And this is yeah. where I go back to having my basic needs covered. I'm just talking Maurice, the individual. I don't live off much. I'm sitting in my 2005 Infinity with 185,000 miles on it, paid off years ago. My only luxury is when I travel. Like I, but I travel hack a lot using points and da, 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 da. When your basic needs are covered, man, you don't care. I don't care. Uh, and, I, and I'm and i saying it. <laughs> so like that. I like that. I, like I, like I'm, and that's me saying it nice. I should be saying I don't give a shit. Because yes. it, it, it is so maddening to me. The purpose of us doing what we do is to help people. Not to compete with each other. I want to create what you meant. So if somebody, if there's another operator, I'm talking to a couple of operators right now who are in Dallas. Yes. We can really grow together, but I only want to grow with him because I know where his faith resides and why he's doing real estate. So I'm going to create with that guy. Doesn't I, yes, I need a lot of revenue because I have a lot of philanthropy related goals. So my drive is driven by my interest in helping people through philanthropic causes and helping people get their freedom some other way. That has zero impact coming from other operators, other people, all that junk. Not interested. The people who are doing weird things is because they don't have their personal basic needs covered or their basic lifestyle covered. So they're taking risks that I will never take. And one more thing, the other reason I won't take risks like that or, or, or risks that are out of the ordinary, when someone invests $100,000 in a deal that I did, I don't look at it like $100,000. It is all the time and sweat and pain that they put in at work to create that money, which is really $160,000 or something like that. Yes. Taxes. A lot of work. You don't, you don't mess around with people's effort and sacrifice. Anyways people man it's all about people i want to do good by people i would be doing a disservice to myself and to those i work with if i was to like compete and be a part of all the nonsense i'm not interested in that that's so 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 powerful there maurice well um thank you for sharing all those nuggets um and just sharing what your company does what you you have done Uh, i feel like i'm Hmm. i've learned a ton here and just you know hearing your mindset and the things the things you've done so i appreciate it i know the audience will appreciate it um, yeah, so it's one of those things where you know you're having a good conversation, a person-to-person convo, and you're both are excited, both sides are interested, and they're actually yeah. kind of a dynamic. <laughs> there's a dynamic flow. Um, that's like that's just an indication to me that like we're actually having a real conversation. No so, doubt, brother. No doubt. Uh, if you would share with the audience your um, your website or the best way to get oh. in contact with you, and always give it the the guests a chance to to do those things. Yeah, let's talk life first. Business can always come. Life. I am huge into lifestyle design. I have I, I help people design lives they don't need a vacation from. So I do coach people in five freedoms, financial freedom, time freedom, geographic freedom, freedom to execute on your purpose and to build meaningful relationships. I talk about that a lot on LinkedIn, as you know. Yes. Um, because I think we are not intended to just exist on this planet. We are intended to thrive. And if I can create a lifestyle I don't need a vacation from that has zero to do with money, then I know a lot of other people can too. So please find me on LinkedIn and read some of that stuff. It's just Maurice Philogene. Instagram, a lot of that stuff is visual. Like I'm getting on a plane on Thursday to go to Turkey, sit there for a few days, read a book. That's, that's what I do from time to time. Yeah. Man. Um, so catch me on Instagram, Maurice Philogene. And then obviously I do have a business. I'm very proud of Quattro Capital. We started in January of 2020. So we're at two and a half years now. We've done 25 or 26 complexes or something like that. Which is a lot. I mean, relative yeah. to what a lot of people do, like that, you divide that out over two and a half years. Like, yeah, that's, you know, you're like it's, 10, it's, it's, 10, de- 10, de- 10 deals a year or something. Yeah. On <laughs> it's been going. I mean, we're having growing pains and I, I recognize that, but 
I would love for folks to check us out. That's uh, the Quattro Way, Q U A T T R O W A Y, the Quattro Way.com. And yeah, man, hit me. There's not a direct message I've ever received that I haven't responded to. So hopefully somebody hits me on LinkedIn or Instagram or something and we'll have a conversation. Beautiful. We'll wrap it up there. Uh, thank you, uh, audience, for listening to one more episode of the Investing Stuff You Should Know podcast. Uh, this is Johnny Nelson uh, with uh, Arctos Capital. And it's so f fun, fantastic to have great guests like uh, Maurice join us and share the knowledge and the things he's learned over a lifetime of all these experiences. So thank you all. And yeah. thank you, Maurice, one more time. My pleasure, man. Thank you for having me on, Johnny.